One of the most critical parts of an irrigation system is the network of piping in the ground. There are various types of pipe and techniques for installing them, but the goal is placing the piping in the ground and burying it out of sight. To introduce you to this process, we'll discuss the different ways professionals place pipe in the ground. Trenching with a machine, pipe pulling, and hand digging. We'll also talk about proper backfilling of open trenches. Safety is a primary concern when using any equipment. And since this is an overview, we'll only mention that before using any equipment, you should be properly trained in its safe operation and use all personal protective equipment required. Another thing to mention here is that before any digging is done on a project, all underground utilities need to be identified and marked so they are avoided. A final safety consideration is to mark open trenches on a site to keep people from getting injured. During the irrigation system installation process, it's necessary to bury the network of main lines and lateral line pipes in the ground. In some instances, pipes can be laid along the top of the ground, such as with drip irrigation laterals and in cases where very steep slopes are being irrigated. Most systems are in ornamental landscapes, and the desire is to keep as much of the irrigation equipment out of sight. There are three methods that are used to get pipe into the ground. Hand trenching, machine trenching, and pipe pulling. In some system installations, all three of these techniques are used. In all instances, the contractor will mark all of the piping paths and sprinkler locations before any digging begins. Since this process is very time consuming, the most efficient path for installing the pipe is chosen based on the component locations and obstructions present on the property. Hand trenching is the most labor intensive way to create a trench. Shovels are used to dig out the trench to the required dimensions. In general, all systems will have some amount of hand trenching, but it's best to keep it to a minimum. Usually, hand trenching is necessary for areas where equipment can't reach and for system component locations. There are specialized shovels that can be used to make trenches so that the least amount of soil is disturbed. Hand trenching is labor intensive, necessary in very tight locations, time consuming, and you'll want to try to minimize it as much as possible. Machine trenching is common in many system installations. A motor-driven device with a sawtoothed chain is used to cut a slit in the ground as the machine moves along the intended path. As the machine advances, the soil is deposited next to the trench. The depth of the trench can be controlled by the operator, ensuring an accurate and consistent depth for the trench. This type of trenching is used in areas of rocky soil to make a clean trench. It is recommended to clean out any leftover debris after the machine is finished to make sure that there is nothing in the trench that could damage the pipe. Trenches are commonly used for the following. For large pipe and PVC installations, excavating rocky soil. When plans specify the depth of the pipe from the top of the pipe to grade, and when snaking pipe into the trench to leave room for expansion and contraction. There are many different sizes of trenchers and they're found in two different categories. Walk behind and ride on. Walk behind trenchers are compact and easier to maneuver, so they're preferred for smaller jobs, areas with minimal access, and small spaces. Ride on trenchers are best used on larger jobs with longer pipe runs. There are also attachments for trenchers that can be used on tractors and skid steers. A backhoe can be used for very large trenches and deep excavations. So the walk behind trencher is maneuverable, compact size easier to maneuver in tight areas, has a small footprint for smaller installation, good for smaller residential projects, and you can use it in areas where large ride-ons can't go. And it's good for rockier soils. Ride-on trenchers are good for large areas, they're less physically demanding, and they're good for rocky soils. And backhoe trenching is great for large jobs, good for wide, deep trenching, and makes it so you can easily dig out manifold locations. Pipe pullers install pipe and wire by pulling it through the ground. 
They have a blade that cuts a slit in the ground and a tapered piece on the end of the blade that leads the way as the pipe is pulled into the soil. These machines cause minimal disruption, so they are often used in areas with pre-existing lawn. It's important to understand the type of soil before using a pipe puller. Rocky soils can score the pipe as it passes through the ground, weakening the pipe and causing premature failures. In areas with rocky soils, professionals take precautions with their equipment when pulling to make sure that the pipe isn't compromised during installation. Pullers are also available as walk-behind or ride-on models, and pipe pulling attachments are available for tractors and skid steers. Pipe pulling is common for poly or HDPE installations with smaller pipe diameters, and it's also good for soils that have a minimal number of rocks. A walk-behind vibratory plow will pull pipe right into the ground with a smaller trench footprint. There will also be very little backfilling necessary, while a ride-on vibratory plow is good for pulling pipe for long distances and for pulling larger diameter pipe. Once the pipe is installed in the ground and inspected, the trenches can be backfilled. Give some thought as to what other items could be buried in the trenches, such as low voltage lighting cable or valve wiring before beginning this process. Follow the techniques of backfilling and compacting in layers to minimize the amount of settling that will occur. Make sure that there is no material in the backfill that could damage the pipe. Some areas specify the type and size of material that can go back into the trenches, so be sure to consult your local codes. Anticipate settling and leave the trench backfill higher than the native undisturbed soil. Depending on the soil type, it can be helpful to lightly water the backfill during this process to aid in compaction. Trenching and backfilling is a critical process in the installation of an irrigation system. Following best practices can help with an efficient installation and prevent return visits to a site. Safety is important not only for the people that are creating the trenches, but also for anyone that could be on the job site. Understanding and following all safety guidelines will lead to a safer job and fewer mishaps.